Great. So remember, algebra 2 pre-calc, inverses are just simply switching your x and y. So for number one here, it's in our best interest to go ahead and rewrite that f of x as y. So y equals e to the x minus y. Okay, so to do your inverse, you want to switch x and y. That is the big idea of inverses. You can also think of it as it flips across that line y equal to x. Okay. So I have x equals e to the y minus y. Now we need to solve for y so we can write in that proper inverse notation. My y is trapped in the exponent. To undo my exponential, I need to do log base, whatever my base is here. The log base is just natural log. So I need to natural log both sides. And conveniently, natural log and e uh, cancel each other out. That was the whole reason why we chose natural log, because it's inverses, so they undo each other. So what I'm left with then is natural log of x equals y minus 3. Questions so far? Okay. So then add 3, and we're going to get y is natural log of x plus 3. I'm going to go and use that proper inverse notation. Since we start off with f of x, we should get f, f inverse of x. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I would have natural log of x plus 3. Again, that plus 3 is outside of the x. Alright, questions on that one? Yes. Okay. Um, now it says to stay in its domain, what is my restriction on my domain for natural log? has to be bigger than zero, right? If we think of our natural log graph, we have a vertical asymptote here, so it has to be bigger than zero. So my domain would be not including zero onto What would my range be? What's my range? All real numbers, good. You guys said it so quietly, I got really worried. Okay, questions on that? Remember to undo exponentials, we use naturals. Okay. So over here, again, to find our inverse, we want to switch x and y. So x equals natural log of y plus 2 minus 3. And now the y is trapped inside my natural log. So first I want to isolate my natural log. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. x plus 3 equals natural log of y plus 2. And how do I even do a natural log? Exponential. We undo all logs with exponentials. But the base of my natural log is e, so I'm going to use an exponential of e. So we exponentiate both sides. I love that word, it makes it sound super fancy. Exponentially. Once again, e and natural log cancel each other out. They undo each other. So e to the x plus 3 equals y plus 2. And then I again want to use proper inverse notation since we start off with y. And I want to say y inverse is e to the x plus 3 minus 2. Questions on that? Now, our domain of this one's a little trickier because our inverse again switches x and y, which means if we're switching all of our x and y values, that means we're also switching our domain. Now, if we think of our exponential, this original guy, my domain was from negative infinity to positive infinity, and my range was from negative infinity to positive infinity. Oh, no, sorry. What's my range of an exponential? Good. So it's zero to infinity, not included. When we do our inverses, we're switching also the domain and range. So what was my range? my y values before, are now my domain, my x values, because again we switched x and y. Which is why you saw We saw that our domain was reflected there with that. Now conveniently the restrictions on natural log gave us the, that domain. But we have to be careful. For a problem like number two, what is my domain for natural log? What's my domain again? 
for natural log. Zero to infinity, not including that zero. But what is my range for natural log? Negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay. So when I go here, again, domain and range are going to flip flop. So what was my range is now my domain. So my domain here is going to be. Okay, so my domain is going to be what was the range. Because again, x and y flip. Negative infinity. Infinity. And if we think about it, what is the graph of e to the x plus 3? It's going to have a domain of negative infinity to infinity. Now, sometimes we have to carry that restriction through, um, particularly when you think of x squared as square root of x. They're inverse operations, but there is a restriction on your uh, range that comes through with this. But here, my range was negative infinity to infinity, so that came through as my domain, which matched up with the graph that I had. Here, my range was 0 to infinity, so that's my new domain, which once again matched up with their graph. All right, any questions with that? I used incorrect notation. Oh, no, there it is. It is incorrect. Yes, me. So we're talking about the domain of the inverse. So, oh, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, I see what you're saying. You're saying of up here? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it would be negative to negative. Yeah. You are correct. Negative 2 into infinity since it was shifted. Very good. All right, other questions with this? Okay. I was trying to crash in here. What? I was trying to fix it here. There's no power. I, I could use this outlet that had power. I had no lights, but this outlet had power. I don't understand it. No internet and no phone. <laughs> but power there. Okay, um, let's go ahead and take a look at questions you had on your homework. Uh, so we'll start off with our natural exponential, so the first chunk of it. Um, do we have any questions on these pieces? I know you guys had to only do the odds, but any questions on those pieces? Okay, and then let's go and take a look at the second piece was the natural log. Did we have any questions on these ones? No. Thirty one. All right. Ooh, thirty one. I apologize. We snuck in an integral. That's what we're doing today. Okay, so we will learn 31 in just a moment. I'm sorry. Oh, that's right. An integral snuck in there, but that's what we're doing today. Are there others that we have questions on? All right, so 29 says, is, says if f of x equals sin x, g of x equals cosine 2x, and h of x is the composition of f of g of x, what is h prime of pi over 4? Okay. So do my derivative of the composition. Remember, we do the derivative of the outside. Inside stays, then chain rule derivative of the inside. So we see f prime inside stay g of x times derivative of the inside, so g prime of x. Does that make sense there? Okay. And then we want to find this at pi root 4. So plug in our values, we need to find g of pi root 4. So we go to g of x. g of pi root 4 ends up being cosine of pi root 4. So we've got that there. I don't think it's letting me write on here. Nope, okay. Um, so we have then f prime at 0. And then we need g prime at 5 or 4. So that means we need our derivative for both f and g. So the derivative of sine is cosine. There's our derivative. The derivative of cosine of 2x. Yeah, here we go. So the negative sine of 2x inside stays the same, times 2. And then we evaluate each of those at the values we're just doing. So f prime of 0 
cosine of zero, which is just one. So that's our one here. And then g prime of pi over four. So that would be negative two. Again, that two is from the uh, chain we'll follow. Here. Sine of pi over four times two, so sine of pi over two. So negative two times another sine of two. So just remember, chain rule comes into effect here. Since f of g of x, chain rule is derivative of the outside, inside stays times the derivative of the inside. You actually had absolutely nothing to do with exponentials and logs for this one. Just our tricks. Does that make more sense? Other ones, do you have questions on? 21. 21. Um, plus the differentiation. Okay. Um, so no product rule. That's nice. Our derivative here is 8x. And then derivative of natural log is 1 over y. But remember dy dx. So that 2 comes. Derivative of natural log is 1 over. And then dy dx. And then for my y cubed, I have 3y squared. Don't forget to be like. Are you good with that piece of it? Okay. It's so like this part here. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so what we have here is a complex fraction because it's a fraction within the fraction. We can't do that for free response. So um, you could either get a common denominator and then multiply by the reciprocal, or since this is causing my problem, multiply by the denominator. So y is what we're trying to get rid of. Do that on both top and on bottom. So on top, I get that negative 8xy. When I distribute my y to the bottom, I'm going to get just 2 and then I have 3 y cubed. It's just a faster way of getting rid of that denominator. Can you two No, because it's still a complex fraction, just disguised with a negative exponent. It's a good question. Other questions we have? Yes, yeah, 23. So for this one, you could do quotient rule. A little bit easier is if you go ahead and just multiply x on both sides there. Because in doing quotient rule, you're going to have that fraction within the fraction, which was not desirable. You're certainly welcome to do that, but it's again going to be easier to just go multiply both sides by x. Um, keep in mind that we would have the restriction x can't be 0, which didn't really impact us too much down here. Um, but just in case there is a question that they took it further, they could ask you something about that. All right, so we have natural log of y equals x squared plus xy. So again, derivative natural log is 1 over the argument. Then we have to do dy dx because the argument has y in it. Then I have derivative x squared is 2x. Here we did have to do a product rule, but just basic, no natural logs with that. So we have second stays for the first plus first stays for the second. Are you good with that piece there? Okay. So then just our dy dx is over, so we have to subtract that over. And then factor that out. So we have 2x plus y, and we divide by the 1 over y minus x. So we have kind of a similar situation we have up here. Where it's a fraction within the fraction. And again, you can get a common denominator multiplied by the reciprocal. But a faster way is to just multiply by that denominator you're trying to get rid of, both on top and on bottom. Don't forget to distribute it. And on the bottom here, we would get just 1 minus x. So remember, guys, no complex fractions. Um, but when we dealt with this earlier, we learned that this is a little bit of a faster way. You don't have to use that method to get rid of your complex fraction, but it's a little bit faster than getting common denominator multiplied numbers. Other questions? Yes. The other 21. The other 21. Is this in our E part? Okay, show me because I don't have the 21 on there. Oh, that. It says omit on the answer key. So we'll omit that one. Um, other questions? Did you remember that? Oh, you heard it. <laughs> remember. Okay. All right, so today we're going to be dealing with integration of our exponentials and logs. So we know our derivatives. And as we know, integration is basically just going backwards. It's the inverse of our derivatives. It's the 
inverse population. So integrals and derivatives undo each other, just like square roots and square roots undo each other. But how does that work with the inverse How does that work? No, they're inverse operations. So in our beginning warm up, we're just showing that E and that log are inverse operations. We're saying that derivatives and integrals are inverse operations. Like they undo each other, just like so. E and natural log are operations. They do something to a set of numbers. Um, integral is an operation because you're doing something to a set of. But I'm going to so inverse function is where we take x minus two and then the operation of so derivatives and integrals are in our some stuff and trying to do that. Don't you worry, there's undo buttons. Anything happening? Okay. 
What was I going to do? Oh, I'm going to do. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, so keep in mind, though, we're not always going to have this nice exponent of just x. As you can see, oh, look, we have a 5x. Oh, look, we have a 1 minus x. Perhaps we might even have a sine x up there. What do we have to use when we have something more than just x on our inside function? Well, we have like that composition of functions. What technique do we have to use? Because there's no, there is no chain rule for integral, right? But what do we have to do? We have to do the u sub. Yeah. If there is something more than just x, if we have a function within a function, we have to do u sub. Yes. Sir. Um, that's a great question. I have no idea. Because you can't spell math without. <laughs> <laughs> because you can't spell calculus without. You is what he meant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was like, no idea, no one did that. <laughs> you know, you was often a common variable that we do use. I don't know. Okay, so for number one here, if it was just integral v the x, your answer would be e the x plus c. But once again, whenever we have something more. Oops. Uh, um, whenever we have something more than just x, so a function, uh, so like x squared, 5x, sine x, we have to consider u sub. So just put a little reminder for yourself. Consider u sub when we have something more than just x. Okay, so because it's way too easy just to do a million integral of easy x's, let's take a look at number one where we have something other than e sub. So here, my inside function is 5x. What do you think we need to let u equal? 5x. So we want it to be the inside of our composition. So u sub is the same thing as before. We just now have a new function to deal with. Right, Jerome? <laughs> what is my du going to be? 5dx. Five five dx. But once again, we see we only have dx, so I want to solve this for dx, so I really have 150u equals dx. Questions so far? Just our basic u sub so far, nothing great. Do I need to change my bounds? Um, no. no, because there is Yeah, no, because we have no bounds to change, good. All right, so let's go ahead and rewrite this in terms of u. So I have, instead of e to the 5x, e to the u. And instead of dx, I have 150u. I'm going to keep that 1 fifth out in front, du. Questions on what happened there? Yeah. Okay. So they are 1 fifth. What's the antiderivative of e to the u? e to the u. Technically, we have a plus c, right? So I have one fifth. I need to put my x back in, so e to the five x. Now, really, it's one fifth times c, but what's one fifth times c? Yeah, just another constant, so you don't have to worry about that. I mean, if you wrote one fifth c, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. But it's not necessary to do that. So one fifth e to the five x. Questions on that? Now, some of you, as we go through and do some of these problems, are going to be able to recognize, hey, I know that chain rule would require me to multiply by 5. So when I want to do the opposite of that, I would just divide by 5. That's fine. If you're able to go from the beginning to this answer right here at the end without that use of, because it is such a small use of, that's fine. Um, but if that's too much for you, do the use of and do it all. All right. Questions with that? Go ahead and try number two. Thank you. 
should we let u be in this problem? Yeah, 1 minus x. That's my inside function of the e to the whatever function. Um, what can I do with this for? Bring it out in front. Why? Yeah, it's just that coefficient. So we know that for both derivatives and integrals, I can take a coefficient and bring it out in front of my integral or derivative. Okay. So if I let u be 1 minus x, du is what? Negative dx. Okay. Um, do I have a negative already, though? No, I just have dx. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. So negative du is dx. Okay. So now when we go and rewrite this in terms of u, so I have the integral. I wouldn't have brought that 4 out, so this would be e to the u. dx is negative u. Then we go and integrate. So I have negative 4. Antiderivative e to the u? e to the u. Plus c. Once again, you can go ahead and just jump straight to your answer. Negative 4. e to the 1 minus x plus c. Don't forget to put your x back in there. Questions with that? Not too bad, right? Just going backwards of what we did before. Alright, I want you to go and try number four. It finally looks a little more complicated. What do you think should be my u here? One over x. If I let u be two x squared, then my d would be two x dx, and I've never gotten rid of this exponent up here. So let u be that one over x. What is the derivative of one over x? Ooh, how about this? How else could I rewrite one over x? X the negative first. What's your derivative of x the negative first? Negative one x and negative second, right? Don't we have that x and negative second sit down there and down there? So that's good. We see its derivative represented. All right. So try number four. Um, and again, we established that you should be that. Are we okay with our u here and our du dx business happening up here? Questions for that? Um, now, was this too necessary for my derivative of u du dx? Is that within there anywhere? We don't have that too anywhere within here. What can I do with that so it doesn't mess this up? Yeah, just bring it out in front. So I'm just bringing that two out in front. It's a one half, right? Because it's in that denominator. All right, let's see. So we've got e to the u. My dx, so it's one over x squared dx. We've got that represented. So I've got du, and that negative just comes out in front. Are we okay with that? All right. So then, did we get for our final answer negative one and a half? e to the 1 over x plus c. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that one? Okay. 
Give number six a try. Talk with your shoulder partner on this one. What can we do for that? What do you guys think? What should you be for this one? 4X? Four Four X? Uh, just, just X? Just X? Should we do you said? No. What should we do, Age? We should just what? Oh, no. Uh, wait for you to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> so, if we let DU. Or sorry, if we let u be 4x, um, that doesn't really simplify the problem at all. If we let u be x, it doesn't simplify the problem, and in fact, you're really just replacing u with x. What could we do to make this easier to work with from the start? You know, I thought factoring as well. Factoring is definitely a possibility, but when I factor this, notice how this is to the 4x and that's to the x. Um, it would be e to the 2x if it had been squared. So I thought factoring as well at first, but it doesn't quite work. What other thoughts do we have? Ayush? Uh, uh, could we like just divide between the thing? So like <laughs> e to the 4x over e to the x and then. Yeah! Can't we just divide each piece of it? Yes. What? Why am I allowed to do that for this problem? What if it would have been like this? This problem? No. no. Oh. Only because there is a single term in the denominator can I divide each piece by the top. Good. Okay, so let's take a look at that. What is e to the 4x over e to the x? E to the 3x. Remember, we divide, we subtract our exponents. 4x minus 1x is 3x. What's 2 e to the x over e to the x? 2. Just 2. What's 1 over e to the x? How can I rewrite that? Good. E to the next. Ah. Now, I can integrate just each piece of it, right? Our rules of integration, we don't often break it up like this. We just automatically do it. But our rules of integration say, hey, this is the integral of e to the 3x dx plus the integral of 2 dx plus the integral of e to the negative x. Right? That's technically what we do anytime we have a polynomial. We just don't write it out like that. But now are these much more manageable and easier to work with? Yeah. <laughs> I never know which one of those other classes. Uh, are these are you, are we okay to do these ones? Okay. So now go through and do these. Um, again, it looks like we're probably going to have to do a little u sub for this guy, a little u sub for this guy. You can just write it off to the side. I don't like to be nice and formal there. If you're able to um, go straight to your answer without doing the u sub, since it is a small one, that's perfectly fine. Um, but again, go do your u sub if necessary, and then finish it up. Yeah. Okay. So, because you self helps counter up that change, mm -hmm. I noticed that here our change was represented. So, if I were to do it for because our to check the number, the directive is not just in my number, but negative one half e to the one over x. Are you alright back there, Bart? <laughs> <laughs> So the derivatives, we have that constant. 
Did you finish it? I got that. I to do I to so see how that feels. So our use of what it's doing is it's changing our variables and we put them both out and out. And the parameters in which we're working. Now for this promise, I can see that variables are already represented. We can only use what we have that happened. Like this was just a about number eight. Uh, there's bounds. And we got trig in there. Okay. So we have bounds, but we do use substitution with bounds. What else do we have to do? Change, change the bounds. Everything needs to be in terms of you. Okay. Now, just because you see an exponential does not automatically mean that you're doing u sub for the exponent. Remember, we want to think to what is my inside function and it's, is its derivative represented. So here at number eight, what is my inside function? What two functions do I see happening? The sine and add e, right? Which one's inside the other one? Right. I see that e is inside of sine. So we want, oftentimes, most of the time, we want to let our u be that inside function. Now let's double check. Is the derivative represented? What is the derivative e of the x? Oh, look, it's represented there. Gee, that sounds like it's going to work out perfectly. OK. So let's let u be that inside. So we actually want u to be the whole thing e to the x, not just the x one. 
And we said du is e to the x dx. And you guys said we also have to change our bounds. So let's see, we have u of natural log of pi, which same thing as e to the natural log of pi, which is what? e to the natural log of pi. Pi. E and natural log are inverse operations. They undo each other, so we're left with just pi. Yeah. Sorry, I ran out of room. Okay. And then we have our lower bound was zero, which would be e to the zero. And what's e to the zero? One. One. Good. So keep in mind we're plugging it back into my u that I chose. Those bounds seem a lot nicer. I don't know. I like that natural log no longer one of my bounds. Okay. So the integral, instead of 0 to natural log of pi, it's from 1 to pi. And then we have e to the x dx. E to the x dx is just simply du. And sine of e to the x is sine of u. So we just have sine of u du. Questions with that? What did we get for d, uh, dx? I can go with you. So du is e to the x dx. So I see e to the x dx. I'm taking this, these two pieces, and I'm replacing it with du. We ended up not having to multiply anything over. There are no coefficients. Other questions? All right. See so how you guys do. What's the antiderivative sign? Negative cosine. 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 Cosine of pi minus a negative, so plus cosine of 1. Now, you could have also done it this way, taking that negative out, so you have cosine of pi minus cosine of 1, and then distributed. Either way, whichever you prefer. All right, um, what's cosine of pi? So negative, negative 1 is positive 1. And what's cosine of 1? And he did that in his head. Um, I don't know. It, it's not a unit circle value. Uh, so we'll leave it like that. That would be one that would be on a multiple choice and you would pull out your calculator for it. No, a part of me wouldn't be surprised if you just busted yeah. that out. <laughs> All right. Questions with that? Okay. Ooh, number 10 looks good. You guys try number 10. I know, I get it. Yeah, I'll tell it. I get it. What do you think our inside function is here? Really? Tangent of x. If I let u be tangent of x, what's the derivative tangent? Secant squared. Oh, gee, do I see a secant squared there? Oh, yes. Yes and no. It's a hidden secant squared. Oh, All right, give it a try. Oh, because Don't you just love those properties? I'm kind of slow, though. <laughs> That's okay, you're only like half a second here. Yeah.
I'm going to start doing it up here. Um, if you haven't finished yet, keep working. If you have finished, check and see if you got the same thing. inside function should be for this. Yeah, square root of x sounds good. And again, we should see that its derivative is represented somewhere. So let u be square root of x. What is du going to be then? Good. One half x, the negative one half dx. Are we okay with that? Um, so then, here's my question to you. Should we take this two, that one half out in front of the whole integral? No. No, because see how that's part of my du there? So we don't want to bring it up, because we actually need that to be with my dx. Okay, um, what else do I need to do? Change those bounds. Now remember, we're putting them back into our u equation. So u of 9 is square root of 9, which is what? 3. And then we have u of 1, which is square root of 1, which is 1. So the bounds didn't get any crazy. We don't have to do plus or minus. They gave us that it is, it is the positive root x. Now, if that was like negative root x, then we would take negative root x and it would change it. But since we're dealing with positive root x, then we do not need the plus root x. So that's what we call, what we call the phrase for. Okay. I'm going to start off by changing my bounds so I don't forget to. Well, golly gee, what has this just become? E to the U to U? How nice is that? Alright. So we get E to the U plus C. No plus C. Evaluate from 1 to 3. Check. Um, we don't have a negative, so when I take my derivative, 1 half comes down, e to the negative 1 half. That's just indicating that's in the denominator. Alright, so now we go ahead and substitute in those bounds. I understand. Bounds. Okay, thank you for your honor. And we get e to the 3 minus e to the 1st. Questions with that? Is that e squared? No. no. It's not e squared. So don't be tempted. I was tempted, but don't do it. No, because so my bounds are in terms of u, my integrals in terms of u. So I left my antiderivative in terms of u. I keep my u bounds. We don't want to go back to the square root of x because that would then be in terms of x, and we'd have to go back to our x bounds. You are allowed to go and put back in that square of x and change the bounds again, but it's kind of doing more work than you have to. Since we already changed the bounds, let's leave it all in terms of you. Good question. Could be? Uh, could we have not changed the bounds, and then at the end, uh, uh, at the end, when we are plotting u for plotting 3 for u, and then we can uh, plot 3, change the square of 3? Say that again? Um, so, uh, I was thinking uh, the answer would be e to the power of square root of 3. You want to go back to keeping the square root of x there? Yeah. So if you go back, so you're going to have to change the bounds to write your integral with those u bounds. If you were to write this integral with x bounds but in terms of u, then you would lose points because it needs to all be in terms of u or all in terms of x. 
So you're going to have to change the bounds here. Now you are allowed to, once you do your antiderivative, you could change this back to be e to the square root of x and change your bounds back to 1 to 9 and do it that way. It's just going to be more work, though, because you've already changed the bounds, so then changing it back is kind of undoing the work that you just did. But you're more than welcome to that. You're just creating more work for yourself. Yeah. Are we not left? Because we have facts. So since we're actually substituting in these values, we're actually evaluating the antiderivative at this point, but no plus c. Notice this guy has no bounds, so we would have plus c. This guy has bounds, no plus c. Good question. Other questions? Okay. Um, so again, this is not e squared. Now, if this was a multiple choice question, AP might do something like this. They might. Um, so just be aware. Um, but I would leave it like this for your thoughts. Okay. Questions with that? Okay. Those AP. All right, let's take a look at our natural log type problems. Ooh, look at that. 1980s, some disco techno times. <laughs> Their music, I don't know, it's hard to get into. <laughs> the 80s is like the best music era ever. We have a ha take on me, the infield. We have so many. Is there an infield? <laughs> All right. Um, so this is integrals of the natural log. Technically, we're not integrating natural log. We're using or we're doing integrals that result in natural logs. We will not be doing this. This is not something we do in Calc AB. Notice our problems do not have natural log um, as like the sole outside function. You see it rear its ugly head in number seven, but that's okay. It's an inside function. <laughs> um, so we will not be doing this. What I mean by this is we're going to integrate functions that result in natural log. So for example, we learned last class that if I started off with my original function as natural log of x, what is its derivative? One over x. And so if I had the integral of 1 over x dx, what do you think the answer would be? Not a, not a trick question. Natural log of x plus c, right? Now there is a technicality that we talked about last class that we need to introduce here. Remember that our argument for natural log has to be positive, right? If we think of our natural log function, it has to be positive. Um, so how could I write this to guarantee that this argument will always be positive? Absolute value. So when we integrate 1 over x dx, it is natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. It is extremely important you have the absolute value. If you do not have it, it will be positive. Okay, so whatever my argument is, or the denominator, if you would, if that ends up being your argument of natural log, make sure you slap an absolute value. So if you think about your natural log graph, the domain for it is only the positive numbers. So we want to guarantee that we're only putting positive numbers into it. So absolute value. Okay. Now, once again, we could have something more than x which means we're going to have to do u sub, so we'll have u subs as well. Um, so let's take a look at that in just a moment. Let's do number one first, though. All right, the integral of 4 over x dx. I don't like that 4 being there. What can we do with it? Let's bring it out in front. G, what is the integral of 1 over x dx? Natural log of the absolute value of x. Let's see. 
Ta-da! Now sometimes you might see the integral written like this. Don't let the dx on top throw you off. It's the same thing as that thing. Any questions on number one? Okay. Now number two, we do have something more than just x in our denominator. It's not quite just one of x. There's a little bit more than that. So we are going to have to use u sub, where my inside function is that 5x plus 2. So we are going to need to use u sub. So let's let u be 5x minus 2. du is 5 dx. All right. Um, I don't have 5 dx though. I just have dx there. Because I've already claimed the entire denominator is my u. So, are you guys okay with it being 1 fifth du is dx? Are we alright with that? Okay. Alright, so now let's go ahead and rewrite our integral. So, let's see, we've got the 1 fifth hanging out in front. Integral of 1 over u dx. Questions so far? Okay. So, we have then 1 fifth times, what's my inside derivative? 1 over u? Natural log of x value of u. Plus. Don't forget though, to start off with x, we need to finish in terms of x. So 1 fifth. Natural log of the absolute value of 5x minus 2. Alright. Questions about? squared minus 4, right? Can I divide 7x over x squared and 7x over 4? No, nope, do not fall to that temptation. Yield. Alright, um, what do you think we should let u be here? Yeah, x squared minus 4. Um, my inside function, we've got really kind of two inside functions. We've got 7x on top and x squared minus 4. But if I let u be 7x, then my du is just 7, and we never take care of that x squared down. If I let u be this entire denominator, then my derivative is 2x, and we can get rid of that x. Okay. So let's let u be x squared minus 4. du equals 2x. x. Um, do I have a 2? No, so I'm going to divide that over so it's 1 half du equals x dx. Are we okay with that? So I can see that my x dx is taken care of. I don't really want that 7. What can I do with it? Just bring it out in front. Alright, so I have 7 times the integral. So we've got 1 over u, x dx became... 1 half d. So I'm going to multiply that 1 half in front. Okay. Make sure you're okay with that. Do we have questions of what happened there? What did that happen? Hold out the 7 and we had the 1 half for my d. Okay. 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 And now we can go ahead and do our inside derivative. So I have 7 halves. What's my inside derivative 1 over u? Natural log of absolute value of u plus c. And then just put back in your x function. Oh, that was a minus one. When you take integrals of fractions, you usually think u substitution with u as your denominator, generating a natural log function. But that's not always the case. So don't force the natural log when you don't need the natural log. Let's take a look at number five here. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Mm -hmm. 
So see how my du was 2x dx? We didn't have the two, so we uh, divide that over. So 1 half du is x dx. The whole x dx got replaced with 1 half du. We brought the 1 half out in front and then just du. So the x was part of my derivative here, x dx. Does that make sense? All right. So number five. We have x over the square root of 16 minus x squared. Just because you see a denominator does not automatically mean you're going to use do stuff that results in natural log. What do you think my inside function would be here? 16 minus x squared. And so again, I often want to let my u be the inside function. If I did the derivative of that, what would I get? Yeah, the negative 2x. Oh, look, there's an x represented. So it sounds like we're on the right track. So let's let u be 16 minus x squared. du is negative 2x dx. I see an x dx. I need to divide over that negative 2. So negative 1 half du equals x dx. Questions on that? So now when I go to do my u sub, x dx is just the one half, or the negative one half du, so I'm going to bring that negative one half out in front, du. And then I have one over square root of u. Are you okay with that? Is that going to be negative one half natural log of the absolute value of square root of u? No. This is just the same thing as negative one half integral of u to the negative one half u. We've done that a million times now. How do we do our anti derivative of that? Yeah, it's just a reverse power rule, right? I apparently need to overflow here. So we've got negative one half. Anti derivative would be u to the one half divided by my new power, which is going to be the same thing as multiplied by 2, plus c. Are we okay with what happened there? Remember power rule? I know that was like October. Are we good? So you have to add 1 to your exponent and divide by your new exponent. When I divide by 1 half, same thing as multiply by reciprocal. I like to just automatically multiply by the reciprocal. It's easier. Okay. And apparently this is going to overflow some more. Let's go ahead and simplify and put back in my u. So let's see, our 2's cancel. We get negative square root of 16 minus x squared plus c. And that is our factor. Questions on that? Yes. Like this guy right here? Yeah. Yep. First ones, no need to. Um, I take it back. You have to put the u back in. Okay. You don't have to simplify the one half and the two, but you do have to put the x back into the u. Okay. Other questions with that one? Okay. I want you guys to go ahead and try six and seven. I'm going to write the answers up. So you go through and do it, and then check to see if you were able to get to the same answer. Again, you go and do six and seven, see if we can get to those correct answers there.
should be a negative one. Uh, sorry, yeah, negative one. Um, but when we take our antiderivative, we use that negative. Alright, give about a minute more and then we'll go over ones that you need to see. We didn't take the antiderivative 1 over x. This was just simply our inside function. We didn't take a derivative, an antiderivative that resulted in natural log. This was not a number you can't do that. If I was only done with the exponent number. Do we need to see number six? Questions on number six? 
I'm assuming we're probably gonna name the C number seven. Does anyone want me to go for number six? Uh, sure. Sure. Okay. <laughs> All right, number six, what did we let you be? So then du would be 2dx. Thankfully, no bounds. All right. Um, you know, I think I want that one half over here. Do you guys agree? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I guess I should write that out. Okay, so I have the integral. I have 1 over the cube root of u. We let this whole thing be my u. And dx is 1 half du, so bring that 1 half up. Are we okay there? Yeah. All right. Now 1 over cube root of u, I'm going to rewrite that as u to the negative 1 third. Are we all right there? All right, so then my antiderivative. So I add 1 to the exponent, so to the 2 thirds, 2 thirds, divide by my new exponent, or multiply by the reciprocal. And now let's fill back in our x's. So I have negative 3 over 4. U was just 2x minus 1. To 2 thirds. Let's see. Oh, where did I pull that negative from? Maybe it's the equal sign there. Like, you know, like I think my fraction negative there became. Oh. Sorry, guys. I'm making negatives appear out of nowhere. Thank you. That is a, I think, a fraction bar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll go with that. All right. Questions on that one? Okay, so let's take a look at 7 here. What was my inside function? Uh, yeah, natural log of x is my inside function. So we let u be natural log of x. So then what is du? 1 over x dx. Do I see this represented over here? Yeah, 1 over x dx. So this is simply the integral of u to the fourth, 1 over x dx, which is du. Questions there? All right. And so now it's just a normal power rule. u to the fifth divided by 5 plus c. That looks more like a 5 less like a half. All right. And then just go back to what we know. Not too bad. All right. Questions on that? Okay. Um, let's take a look at number 12. Are there more than one number 12 right here? No. Okay, this number 12. Don't flip any pages, let's just go to this. <laughs> 1 over cosine squared x tangent x. What are your thoughts? Knowing that we're going to do it, what are your thoughts? <laughs> number what? For number 12. Do you use them? Do you use them? One, one. one. No, no, no. Separate it. No, we can no, you cannot separate it. Never mind, you can't. You can't. You can't. Yeah, because when I said use them, right, you looked at me like I said. Okay, because it's not that one. Use them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because it's not that one. So. Florida says 1 over cosine squared is secant squared, right? Yeah. So is this secant squared tangent? Secant squared cotangent. Secant squared cotangent, right? So this isn't secant squared tangent because my tangent's in the denominator, but I do like that you said secant squared because what's the derivative of tangent? Secant squared. Oh. Oh. Interesting. Okay, so you could rewrite this or not rewrite it. But you guys said 1 over cosine squared is secant squared. So is it alright if I write it like this? Are you okay with that? Yes. Okay. Now, again, the reason why we're doing this is because, hey, derivative of tangent secant squared, maybe I can do a u sub. 
Delicious. Thank you. Didn't we already have the conversation about Subway in here? Yes. Yeah, I thought so. All right. Um, so, are you guys okay if we let you be tangent then? Yeah. Okay. Let you be tangent. What is do you? So you get squared x dx. Your heart shall be palpitating. So excited that secant squared is there. Um, do I need a change bound? Do I need to do anything else? No, we've got secant squared dx is represented. Secant squared dx is represented. All right. So we would have secant squared dx is just du. There's nothing left on top. And then tangent x is u. So integral of 1 over u du. Yeah. So with that, what's the integer of 1 over u? Natural log. So natural log of the absolute value of u plus c, which for this particular problem, natural log of the absolute value of tangent of x plus c. Look at that, Petey. Questions? Yes. So could we expect like these kinds of questions like on the quiz? Yeah. Yeah, the um, AP especially likes to throw in some kind of manipulation. So notice this one, we did end up using a U sub and we did have natural log, but we had to manipulate a little bit. Are we already running out of time? Okay. Um, so your homework for tonight is to do the odds. We will have well, that's unfortunate. Um, what did you say? Um, let's go odds. <laughs> and then next class, I think we're scheduled to do more with this, right? Yes. The quiz is not for, I think next class is just more practice with this. The quiz is the following. Oh, today's Monday. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm on yeah, we will have the quiz on Friday. <laughs> um, so we have Stinger 7 the following day. So on Monday? Yeah. I can just have a day. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sure.